tractor is not getting much traction as uh, we got we had I don't know probably 18 inches of snow that had accumulated we had about a foot in the last storm plus there was a bunch underneath that and then the other night we got I don't know we probably got at least three inches of rain in six hours and it was 50 degrees that night so a lot of the snow melted and then compacted and then the temperature dropped back down last night so there's just you can see over here actually anywhere where the water pooled is just solid ice and then underneath all the snow it's ice too so when he's trying to drag out that big tree kept pulling the tractor back even though the winch was down the thing on the back of the tractor the winch was down uh, he couldn't just couldn't pull it back so struggling to get things exactly where we want them to go but we're making do here When I began creating a video record of the Nights and Weekends homestead, I privately promised myself that I wouldn't cut out all the mistakes and stupid stuff I occasionally do. Fortunately, I seem to do fewer and fewer stupid things as years progress. This one, however, is one for the record books. Recently, while visiting my local small engine repair shop, I saw this combination can that holds bar and chain oil and mixed gas. It seemed like a great idea and I'd never seen one before. I bought it and could tell instantly it was a good idea. There's a lot to carry when you're going into the woods to work with a chainsaw, and reducing the number of containers you have to carry by one is a great idea. However, I haven't had the opportunity to use it other than to fill both of the tanks. My saw ran out of gas during this maple tree felling and I was excited to use the new combination can. Unfortunately, it took me way longer than it probably should have to figure out why nothing was coming out of either side. I forgot to take the protective caps off the insides of the nozzles. This is probably the most tempted I've been not to share a stupid mistake with you all. John has known for a while that this tree, and eventually its partner, would have to come down at some point. So he's planted two new maples farther from the house, and they're doing well. So the issue that we have, other than the slipperiness, is that the house is on the other side of the tree, and this play set is on this one. So kind of got a narrow needle to get through. But we're getting it now. Got some of the bigger, heavier stuff out. He did have to drop a tree. He was gonna try to go around the house, but there's just so much ice right here. And then when he got through there, there's a channel that all this water drains naturally in the spring. So that's all frozen. And then he got to the driveway and that was frozen. So he basically just after messing with it for a while said to heck with this, I'll leave it here. It's not in the way of the driveway. And uh, he'll come out maybe when there's better traction or limb it up right there and put it in the bucket, bring it over a stack at a time. But kind of a pain when it's just really slippery. Uh, I think we're going to make some headway now though because we got the bigger pieces out and starting to get it cleaned up in here. We really didn't want to have to limb it out right here and leave all the brush on the lawn. So kind of what we're trying to do is leave it so that everything can be dragged and then he can limb it out on his pad over there uh, so the brush isn't in the way and then this spring he'll just take it down to the bonfire pile for the next party we have but we're getting there now. My mother-in-law, Sue, will not be appearing in this video. She's a bit of a worrier whenever John, or any of us really, 
are doing work like this. So she decided it would be a good day to be away from the farm for an afternoon. Emily had asked me to text her as soon as the tree was on the ground so she could call her mom and let her know that everyone was safe. I, of course, forgot until we were well into the cleanup phase. Emily is fairly used to my poor short-term memory by now, so I hope she wasn't too worried. Once I did remember to tell her we were all fine, she brought Marty over so they could see what was going on. Now, Marty loves his grandfather and anything Grandpa likes, including the tractor. So he was pretty excited when I asked if he wanted to help hook up some of the logs to the winch to be dragged to the woodpile. I guess we're just about done. That was all kinds of fun. Good afternoon's work, good workout. And uh, glad we were able to get most of the brush anyway. I mean, there's quite a bit of stuff that broke off, but you know, it's substantially better than if we had to cut it all up and limit up here. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to clean up the lawn. And he's got all of his stuff over there to get working on it. Likes to come out and kind of do an hour or two at a time in the mornings when it's nice out so that'll give him a pretty good start he kind of he thinks that I think he he's at least right he thinks there's a, at least a cord in that tree I think I think there's probably more than but uh, it depends on how far up the limbs he goes I tend to be a little bit more uh, greedy in that department and cut up even the really tiny stuff but there's quite a bit of firewood in that tree so that's pretty awesome that at least it's gonna have another use warm in the house. And uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun and it's always fun to work with John, especially on this kind of work. As I said, he's the one that taught me how to do all this. So super fun to give it back a little bit, I guess. The birds are already coming back into that other tree. <laughs> Probably wondering what the heck's going on. That one looks confused. Mm -hmm. 